Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will be discussing the part 3 of different communicable diseases. And this time, I will tackle about respiratory diseases. If you missed the part 1 and the part 2 of our previous discussion, you can check the link in the description below. Let's start! Diphtheria. It is an infectious disease caused by Carinibacterium diphtheria that infects the throat and upper airways. It also produces a toxin that affects other organs. Mode of transmission. First is direct physical contact with the infected person. Indirect contact with the contaminated surfaces and breathing from the aerosolized secretion when the infected person cough or sneeze. The incubation period is 2 to 5 days. Signs and symptoms The illness has an acute onset and the main manifestations are sore throat, low-grade fever, and swollen glands in the neck. In severe cases, the toxin may cause myocarditis or peripheral neuropathy. It can also cause difficulty of breathing and swallowing due to the buildup of dead tissue in the throat and tonsils. Diagnostic test Physical exam This is to check the swollen lymph nodes and will show a grayish exudates that coats the throat or tonsils. To confirm the diagnosis, nose and throat swab or throat culture is done and will show presence of Carinibacterium diphtheria. Management Antibiotics such as penicillin or erythromycin is prescribed. Antitoxin to counteract the diphtheria toxin in the body. Before giving, perform first on skin allergy test. Nursing intervention Encourage soft diet and small frequent feedings. Watch out for signs and symptoms of shock due to airway obstruction or anaphylaxis. Emphasize the importance of respiratory etiquette, proper waste disposal, and hand washing. Prevention Immunization a complete dose of DPT or the diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus vaccine. This vaccine should be given for three doses to infants at six weeks old for the first dose, 10 weeks old for the second dose, and 14 weeks old for the third dose. Pertussis. It is also known as the whooping cough. Due to uncontrollable violent cough, the patient experiences difficulty of breathing that he or she needs to take a deep breath which results to high-pitched whooping sound. It is a highly contagious respiratory disease caused by Bordetella pertussis. The bacteria attach to the cilia, which is a tiny hair-like structure of the upper respiratory system, and release toxins that damage the cilia and cause the airways to swell. Mode of transmission It can spread by person to person, mainly through droplets of the infected person when he or she sneeze or cough. The incubation period is 7 to 10 days. Signs and symptoms The initial symptoms include mild fever, runny nose, and cough. Gradually, the cough will develop to violent coughing due to thick mucus that accumulates inside the airways. Severe and prolonged coughing attacks may lead to vomiting and extreme fatigue. Other complications include coughing paroxysm, pneumonia, and 
seizure, diagnostic test, nasopharyngeal swab or culture. This is done to check the presence of Burdetella pertussis. Serology. The best time to collect is 2 to 8 weeks following the onset of cough when the antibody titers are at their highest. Management. Antibiotics such as azithromycin, clarithromycin, or erythromycin is prescribed. Fluid and electrolyte replacement and oxygen therapy. Nursing interventions. Maintain isolation and proper waste disposal. Suction equipment should always be at the bedside. Monitor INO. Emphasize the importance of respiratory etiquette and hand washing. Prevention. Immunization. A complete dose of DPT or the diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus vaccine. Before we proceed, please consider on clicking the subscribe button below so that you will be updated on our latest videos. Thank you for the support. Let's continue. Tuberculosis. It is a contagious infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. The bacteria usually attack the lungs but it can also damage the other parts of the body. Mode of transmission. It is airborne. Direct or indirect contact with the infected person. The incubation period may vary from about 2 to 12 weeks. The infected person is still contagious as long as the bacteria are still present in the sputum. Signs and symptoms. Calf for more than two weeks with sputum and sometimes with blood. Chest pains. Body weakness. Weight loss. Fever. And night sweats. Diagnostic tests. Chest X-ray, Mantu test or PPD skin test or tuberculin skin test. These are all the same. It is done by injecting 0.1 ml of tuberculin purified protein derivative into the inner surface of the forearm via intradermal and using a tuberculin syringe and the bevel of the needle facing upward. The result should be determined 48 to 72 hours after the procedure. Lastly is the sputum AFB. This is the confirmatory test to detect the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Management, 6-month treatment of isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and etambutol. These are all taken before meals and streptomycin. Common side effects of each drugs. Isoniazid. It causes peripheral neuropathy, therefore increased intake of vitamin B6. It is also hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic. Next is rifampicin. It causes red-orange secretions and it is hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic. Pyrazinamide. It can cause hyperuricemia, therefore avoid purine-rich foods and increase oral fluid intake. Etambutol. Optic neuritis, therefore inform the patient to report any visual disturbances. Lastly is the streptomycin. It is autotoxic and nephrotoxic. Nursing interventions. Maintain respiratory isolation. Health education about the disease and the importance of completing the medication. Emphasize the importance of respiratory etiquette, proper waste disposal, and hand washing. Prevention. Immunization. 
BCG vaccine. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome It is a viral respiratory disease caused by a SARS-associated coronavirus. SARS global outbreak was in 2003. Mode of transmission Airborne droplets Close person-to-person -person contact And indirect contact with the contaminated surfaces. The incubation period is usually 2 to 7 days, but it can reach up to 14 days. Signs and symptoms Fever and chills Headache Body weakness and myalgia Dry cough Dyspnea and hypoxia Diagnostic test PCR or the polymerase chain reaction test Management Symptomatic and supportive treatment since there is no treatment or vaccine Oxygen therapy Intubation and mechanical ventilation if necessary Nursing interventions Maintain isolation measures strictly Use proper personal protective equipment Emphasize the importance of respiratory etiquette Proper waste disposal and hand washing. Our next topic is pneumonia and COVID-19. It is also under the communicable diseases, but it's in a separate video. I put the link in the description below, or you can click it here. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video!